What's going on guys? If you're watching this video, you probably have two things that apply to you. Number one, you have a P51 Bullet, probably the most fun bike, class two e-bike out there with great suspension. And number two, you wanna upgrade it. And if you're watching this, then that means you actually have an upgrade part, specifically a BAC 855 kit from Handleworks. And today we're gonna to be installing this onto the P51. And to be honest with you guys, this is my first time doing it on this bike as well. I've done this two or three times on my Super 73 RX, so it should be pretty straightforward. But in case you're new to this process specifically, I will do my best to guide you through it. We, we gonna do this together, we're a team. Let's go. Now, two precautionary or just starter tips is to one, either turn off or remove the battery from the bike. And number two, disconnect the motor cable. Now, I actually had to upgrade and swap my motor. Uh, so ignore the fact that the motor cables don't match up, but just disconnect this from that on your bike and you'll be good to go. So now let's find the controller. Okay, so in case if you didn't know, the controller for the P51 is actually located under the seat. Everything is basically inside the frame. So once you remove the four bolts that keep this seat locked in, we will find the controller. Try to keep all your bolts and all your screws in one spot so that way they don't roll away and you're left looking for them when you're done and you don't, you don't know what to do because you can't find one. Once we undo the screws, there is our controller. Now the controller is actually just hanging out in here. It's not bolted down to anything. It's just kind of free sitting here. Uh, but do be very careful when removing this because you don't want to accidentally unplug anything you really don't need or you don't want to damage any of the cables. So I would say carefully pull back any cables that you find in here so that way we can go ahead and disconnect them. Yep, just like that. Like I said, don't just yank the whole controller out. You don't want to damage anything by mistake. And now as you're unplugging some cables, you might detach them and they'll go back into the frame. That's fine. You can just kind of finger your way through there and find what you need. Now, once you have everything that you could get disconnected, disconnected, there might be one or two real deep in there, but to make it easier, I'm gonna feed my motor cable through the frame so that way I'm not tugging anything that's going down the bike. So, P51 does a good job at ke keeping everything nice and tidy with zip ties. So go ahead, find any zip ties that hold the motor along the frame and just cut them up so that way you guys can't see it, but it's pretty straightforward where if you look for it, but that way you can feed the motor cable through to the frame. Okay, so if your bike is anything like mine, then you are not going to see pretty much this part right here. That's because this and a lot of extra cable is kind of tucked away in this little square bracket. So we have to pull it out to undo everything. And then once you do, it'll give you guys a lot of loose tension and then pretty much you should be able to very carefully feed it through the frame. Now, like I said, be very careful. You might have to go back down there to kind of feed it through any sort of holes or openings. To be fair, I was told that because my bike is a bit of an earlier model, this would be a bit more difficult. So not surprising. It looks like the tape is in the way. So if I just undo that, I might be able to clear myself. You just unplug it, feed it back in there. Ugh. And then just like that, a little bit of a shimmy. Come on, shimmy in the hole. There we go. What cable is that? I don't really feel any cable. Oh wait, I do. Like I said, you left the finger I know it sounds weird. Finger around the holes to see and make sure you can find everything that you are meant to disconnect without damaging it in any way because if you damage it, you might not even be able to do this properly. So, all right, what do we got here? This looks like the pedal assist cable. Now, where do we unplug it? Aha. I know you guys can't really see, but this is like all just boring behind the scenes stuff. I can't really guide you guys educationally or instructionally, I guess, however you want to word it, on how to do this. You kind of have to do this on your own. Oh, come on now. There we go. So now that everything is disconnected on the bottom end, what I'm pulling on should be the pedal assist cable. 
And then let me disconnect this, but make sure it doesn't go flying back inside. Good. All right, look at that, guys. This is the controller for the P51, the stock controller, actually. Nothing too crazy. And then in case anyone's curious, I got it here somewhere. This is the stock Super 73 controller, and this is the stock P51 controller. In case anyone really bothered to care. So let's go ahead and install the BAC now. Okay, so now that we have everything more or less taken care of, let's take a look at the new controller. So just like the RX controllers or the Super controllers, pretty much it looks exactly the same. And let me grab onto this so it doesn't go anywhere. It is a very, oh, hold on now. It is a very snug fit. Yeah, it, it is a snug fit in there. You know what, just so that way I don't lose this in the frame, let me just plug that in first. Let me just do that. There we go. Okay. I'm just moving it out the way for now. Now, let's do everything else. Next step should be to feed the motor cable through. So in your kit, you should also get another set of cable. This is the new motor, or the new cable you're gonna use for your motor. Wound up nice and neatly. And then simply enough, feed it through the hole. Or maybe it's the other way around. Hold on now. Oops. Okay. Once you feed the cables through, you're ready to move on to the next step. A pro tip is you see these three longer cables here? As you're feeding them through the frame, they're gonna get stuck on like one of the flat parts of the frame right before you get through the hole. So what I did, you could either tape them so that way they're all just like one big cable. Or what I did was I did a loop-de-loop -loop zip tie. So I zip tied all three of them together like that with the excess zip tie. I kind of like fed it under as if it's a fourth cable, but it's longer so that way it's easier to grab once you're at the edge of the hole. And then once you do that, you can pull it all through and you're good to go. So let's move on to the next step. All right, next thing that you're gonna wanna do is while you still have the controller out in the open is to plug everything up as best you can. So a lot of the stuff is actually color coded. So you take the green cable, plug it in to the green cable on the controller, yellow to yellow, blue to blue. There's two controllers or two plugs here for the lighting that are actually on the uh, controller itself. So you might wanna do a little extra feeding here. Just be very careful because since they are smaller, you wanna make sure that they're lined up properly. There's only one arrow on one of the plugs and not so much on the other. Plug in your brake light. So there's one cable down here and it's like hiding in the frame. So I don't think you guys are gonna be able to see it very well because it's very hidden and very tucked in. I almost didn't see it, but right in here. I'll see if I can zoom in. Yep. That right there, this little brick, that's a cable that I almost missed plugging in. Before it sneaks back inside, let's just do a quick plug in, flat side up top. Flat side up top. I'm gonna have to do some unplugging and replugging to make sure that everything is somewhat neat and tidy. Okay, now let's try and uh, Get everything inside here. Oh wait, actually, there's one more cable you have to feed back through. That's your pedal assist cable. So this one should be a little bit easier to feed through the bottom of the frame. And just like how you found it, or how you probably found it, it needs to be uh, tucked in a little bit when you're done. Okay, so I know this probably is not the best angle to show you guys, but once you feed the pedal assist cable from the top all the way down, you're gonna have a little bit of extra slack. All you gotta do is once you plug them in together, lit, literally, however you wanna do it, just shove it in there. Just put it back in just like how you found it. Now, also just be careful not to damage anything, of course. And then just to be on the safe side as well, and just so you don't forget, put the grommet at least through the motor cable here so that way you don't forget to do it later. And once you're done with that, you should be able to put the grommet back on. I'm not the biggest, I mean, I'm a big fan of grommets like these. It's just, they're so hard sometimes to get lined up back into the frame. Okay, that should be good. Perfect. Perfection. Okay, next step. Now the next step is to put the controller in the frame. Now, 
That sounds easy enough, but one thing you got you want to make sure of that you don't do is damage any of the connections. So the controller is going to be a very snug fit into the frame. But see, there you go. Snug fit, if you're lucky enough, it should just slide right in with a little bit of clearance over the top, but I don't think that should get in the way of the seat. Next step, where did I put that thing? Where, where did I put it? Okay, wait, no, for real, where did I put it? I'm being so serial. Now, the next step in the process is one, plug everything back in, as in your motor cable, after you do your, your pedal assist cable, I just did that off camera, but I'm not gonna, everything is loose hanging. I'm not gonna tighten everything up until I ensure that everything is good to go. Next up now is swap out the display. So I'm just gonna unplug it and then plug in the new display. And then if everything works properly, I'll remove this one, put on the new one, but you guys can do that on your own time, all right? Uh, so let me go ahead, unplug this display, plug in the new one, put the battery on so it has power, and we'll test out just to see if it has power. So the display cable should be pretty straightforward to find. There's actually two cables for it. Actually, technically because the display, let me show you guys if you're new to this stuff. Technically speaking, there's two cables that come out of the display. One for the display power itself and another one for the pedal assist buttons. But actually, On the new display, it's a two-in-one, so you only need to test it by disconnecting one of them. Which one they are, I don't know, but there's only one cable that comes out, so give me a moment. Is it the green one? Actually, it could be the green one, actually, now that I look at it, but just to be on the safe side, let me disconnect both of them and see which one it is. You know what, since we're gonna get messy, I'm gonna take off the front number plate and get access to all the cables that I have behind there. That's a cool thing about this number plate is it's very easy to hide all of the cables because it is basically a rat's nest back here. I won't lie to you guys. Okay, let's take a look. So this is the cable. It's the green one. Okay, so we know you're gonna wanna just unplug not the pedal assist buttons up here. I mean, you're gonna need to unplug it anyway to, to swap this on, but if you wanna test it, you gotta disconnect the, the green display cable, which is probably behind the number plate somewhere. Okay, that is now plugged in. Again, I'm not gonna set it up. I'm not gonna swap everything out on camera, just, to, just right now, just to make sure this works. Next, let's plug in the battery. Let's make sure that we lock it in. So at this point now, these controls and this display should not work. The only thing that should be working is the new one. So let's go ahead and test it out real quick. Again, it's not pretty. We're just testing it out. So if we do it right, actually is the battery turned on? Battery's flipped on. If we do everything right, we just hold down the power button here. Handle works. Logo pops up. 100% battery, which is what I was at before. Now just to quickly test to make sure everything is working. I'm not gonna go full speed. Just gonna pick up the back end and make sure everything is good. Nice. Okay. And just so you guys can see as well, as you can see, it's still a mess. It's not done yet, basically. Uh, but on mode one of the controller, that's all there is to it. Looks like it's maxing out about 15 miles an hour. Let's try mode two here. I wish I could have it propped up better to see it. Okay, here we go, mode two. 29, and now for the big boy mode three. I'm actually kind of nervous about this, but let's see. 37 is what it says. Oh my God. This is like a baby Sauron. <laughs> this is insane. <laughs> okay, look, I'll admit. Am I the most professional instructional how to install guy on YouTube? No, I never claimed to be. Uh, I try to kind of aim more towards, hey, you're doing this for the first time, so am I, let's do this together and I'll give you some pointers as I do it. So 
Uh, with that being said, the BAC is installed now. Obviously, I need to put the seat back on, clean up some of the cables and the wires up on the handlebar set. But we're good to go now. So if you did find this video helpful in any way, shape or form, go ahead and do me a favor, drop a like, leave a comment down below if you got this setup as well and what you think of it and subscribe if you guys are new because I'm taking this thing out for a lot of adventures and I'm sure you guys want to see it as well. With that being said, hope you guys have a good one. Peace.